thank everybody for coming out. This is a special occasion. It's been a long time coming. Um, we'd like to welcome you, welcome you to the Lookout Mount Drug Task Force Building Dedication Ceremony. Uh, we would like to see the bed. We're donating the, the bronze flags to the, the mayor, the city manager, and all the council members. We appreciate the flag. The city of the pay for it. In a moment, uh, we'll have two speakers to be uh, former drug agent, commander of the drug task force, and the chief of the and also a former agent of the drug task force. Uh, the drug task force board member today just like to thank uh, everybody for coming out today. Uh, about 2016, Commander Doyle had a vision for a new drug task force. Today to be official, the dedicating of the drug task will be able to Commander Doyle. And also, if everybody didn't know, we also retired badge number 901. So that will all be badge number one. So today we honor a man that touched many lives. Commander Patrick Doyle was the first and foremost family man. Commander Doyle loved his wife, Daisha, his son, Peter. Commander Doyle often talked about his wife and his son that he called for. Commander Doyle preached to his agents that family came first. His love for his wife and his boys was a shining example to everyone. And his love for us. He definitely loved all his agents and he showed it. He never had to say it, but we all knew. He always took care of us. He loved all of us and his law enforcement family. Although Commander Doyle wasn't much older than most of us, some of us was older than us. It was a shining example for all of us, Paul the figure. Commander Doyle was a uh, born leader. At this time, I'll turn it over to Mr. When Kane asked me to say a few words, uh, I kept thinking about uh, what would be appropriate. And uh, the word integrity kept coming back to me time after time as I was reflecting over what I could say about uh, Pat and his life and uh, the way I knew him. Uh, I actually had the pleasure of uh, hiring Pat uh, in 1997. When I was elected in 96, he worked for me for about six weeks until Dino stole it from me and uh, went to the Lafette PD. And, uh, I'm glad he did. He was able to move on his career there. But uh, So I got to know him really well those first few months there at the, at the sheriff's office. When I was thinking about uh, one of the reasons I know Pat, the reason he wanted this building so bad was it was like the time that he was on the drug task force, every time the rent would come due, he'd have to move. And Larry Black and Pat, those folks, uh, know what I'm talking about. I think uh, I was counting it up and he had moved four previous times in four different buildings before he got to this building. This was building number five from the time he was on the drug task force. Uh, if memory serves me correct, he was in the old Georgia Forestry building uh, and then he came uh, underneath the commissioner's office. Then he went to the towers across the street. Then he went back to the trailer. And the trailer, I think he finally decided was he wasn't going to move nowhere else. He had a permanent home. And he talked to the control board and, uh, and told us how he had saw this building. And, uh, talked with Lanny uh, Thomas uh, about the purchase of the building. And, desired to build it. Of course, money is always an issue, but we worked on it, worked on it, worked on it. And after we twisted Lanny's arm quite a few times, uh, and he's still crying over there, hey, aren't you, Lanny? <laughs> uh, we were finally able to make it happen. And, uh, and he was proud of this building here. Uh, very proud that he was able to get what he called a final home. Unfortunately, uh, death came and he only got to serve here about a year and a half or two years. But 
it's here, the building's here, it's in good shape, thanks to a lot of these guys that work here. They've done a lot of work on it over the last two or three years. And uh, it is a permanent home now for the circuit drug task force. But getting back to integrity, I just thought of, I kept thinking about Pat uh, Doyle and the type of man he was and how I knew him and, and how I viewed him and that word integrity always came back. And as I narrowed that down, I got to thinking about the seven aspects of integrity. Uh, some people call it the magnis magnificent seven aspects of integrity. And the first one is honesty. And there's no doubt in my mind uh, that he happens a truthful man, an honest, open man, something that if he told you, you could take it to the bank. A handshake, his handshake was worth all, all that you needed. You didn't need a contract. Secondly, respect, and he definitely had that respect. You just heard Kane talk about the respect he had of his family, of his working, the men and women that worked with him, uh, the people at the PD. Uh, he was a man uh, that held and was due respect. Thirdly, he was uh, he could generate trust, and, and that goes all in with respect. The prospect. He knew uh, if he told you something, whether it was a bad guy or a good guy, you could trust him. And pride. He was very proud of the badge you wore. He was proud of the uh, the fact that the drug task force operated in this circuit, that he was assistant commander under Larry Black, who's here today, and also the fact that he eventually rose to the ranks and became the commander. He's a prideful person. He's very prideful about what they did in forcing the drug laws and uh, hopefully um, cutting back on the drug trade in our circuit. He was a responsible person, number five. He was responsible in his work. Uh, he was responsible about the cases he made. He was responsible for getting those to the district attorney's office in a timely manner. He was responsible for making the people under him do the job that they were set to do. Number six, keeping promises. I never knew him to, I don't know if he ever promised me anything, but I would say he promised a lot of people standing here things. And, and he always kept those promises. He told them that he kept them. Then lastly, helping others. Even though he was arresting people, he was still trying to help them. Uh, I think that was something that, that many of us in the drug business always did, even though we, we made an arrest. Uh, if we saw that that person needed help or wanted help, uh, we'd always extend a hand to them to try to help them some way, some form or fashion. And he was that type of person. Not only the, the people that had been charged, but other people in our community. When I think about helping others and doing things, I know he was very involved in the Boy Scouts. He was involved in helping younger boys and young men grow their lives and, and to be better men, to grow up to be better men than the Scouts. And uh, he was very passionate about that. All that goes into integrity, those seven things. And Pat Bulls, his distinguished service to our community is undeniable here today. But three, three years after his death, his service is certainly undeniable to the community of Lafayette and to this entire circuit. I read this passage at his uh, funeral, Matthew 5, 9. And uh, I wanted to read it again today as I close out here. Said, uh, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Without saying, Pat loved his law enforcement profession, he loved his family, he loved his co workers, and he loved being the peacemaker here at the Lookout Mountain Tradition Circuit Drug Task Force. Thank you. You'll notice I don't have anything in front of me it's because I sit down about six times this week to try to write something out about that. And I can't. Three years later, I still suffer. I will tell you that Pat Doyle was a leader. Pat Doyle taught a lot of these young kids in these uniforms over here how to be a police officer. He taught me how to be a drug agent. But he taught me more. 
he taught me that this is a family, and he treated each of his agents like his kids. I can guarantee you that. I can tell you about a time sitting in a hospital room on a Sunday, and he just got through chewing me out about it working on my house. The doctor come in and said, I need everybody to leave because I need to talk to my family. I started to get up and pass top and say it. That's my wife and that's my brother. Anything you got to say, say it. This field is more than built. It's a legacy of Pat Doyle. And it's well deserved that it'll be here long after we're gone. I could keep everybody here all day long, but I'm going to tell you, this is a well-deserved thing. And that badge being retired is well-deserved. It should have happened a long time ago. Thank y'all. the badge of 901. This is Pat, Pat's badge. This is going to be presented to one of the DJ and one of the nation. Maybe one is out of the book after this building. to tell you all thank you it's a very emotional day we've been excited about this for a long time and we want to appreciate <laughs> say how much we appreciate our family that's here um, it's been a hard road we're working on year number four it doesn't seem like it but we've stuck together and look at what we built and look at this all i can say is his daddy's really proud right now <laughs> 